So I made a big deal earlier about, or maybe not a big enough deal, but there is a big deal to be made about every normal model looks the same. It just has different numbers in different places, but they all have the same shape. Okay. Um, well, they might be squished. Um, but yeah, it's always the bell curve. Okay. Always the same shape. Maybe it's squished. Maybe it's stretched out, but they all have the same shape. So sometimes what we do is we standardize them. Okay. Instead of looking at all these different normal curves, we just standardize it because uh, the probabilities are always going to be the same. It's just in relation to where's the mean and where's the standard deviation. If you go back to the very end of the first video, every single normal model looks literally like this. Here's the mean. Here's the mean plus one standard deviation. Here's the mean plus two standard deviations. So what we do in this video is we talk about a standard normal model a normal model, but the standard one, and that's just this, but we just pick really nice numbers to make graphing it really easy. And then we can put everything we want in terms of this easy version. And that's what the standard normal model is. Okay. It says, well, the mean is the middle. Let's call the middle zero, right? It's on the middle of the coordinate plane, right? Zero is the origin. And then uh, let's just have standard deviation be one. Right, so the IQ, right? We had mean be 100, um, standard deviation be 10. They're making up numbers anyway. They should have just done standard normal and used zero and then one, but I don't think anyone wants to say that they have a negative IQ. I don't know. I hate, I hate, oh, I know I keep bringing it up. I hate IQ. Uh, you can ask me about that sometime. Anyway, so here we are, standard normal model. So it's also useful when we're comparing different events, okay? So like maybe we're comparing rainfall in two different, wait, that's literally the next example. <laughs> maybe like in the next example, we're comparing rainfall in two different cities or rainfall and wind speed is actually the next example. We want to see what's more likely, what's more unlikely. How can we standardize these two different things? They are on different scales, right? It, it's kind of the same same thing as like, you know, what, what's bigger, uh, six inches, a third of a foot. Let's standardize these measurements. Okay. Um, and that's what we're doing here. Okay. So again, uh, standard, standard normal model Z is let's, Again, be consistent with these colors. Standard normal model is often called Z. Sometimes people put a horizontal bar in the middle of the Z to show that it's not a two. It's normally distributed with mean zero and standard deviation one. Okay, so this is just made up to be a consistent, easy standard with nice numbers. Right, because it doesn't, what, all that matters is that we're using the same scale for both. It doesn't matter what scale we use, but may as well use something that's easy, right? And that's how this was chosen, all right? And to convert something from a different scale with X to the Z scale, we use something called a Z score, and we convert it like so. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's read through the example. So let's say... Um, all of you are going to know the annual rainfall for Portland. It's about 80 inches per year. Standard deviation, about 8 inches. It's normally distributed. Um, and also assume that the average wind speed in Chicago is 10 miles an hour with a standard deviation of 2 miles an hour. So one year, Portland had an annual rainfall of 24 inches. And Chicago had a wind speed of 13 miles an hour. What was more extraordinary? What was more irregular? What was more out of the norm? What was more bizarre? Now you could use a computer and calculate this, calculate the probability of each of these events happening. But you can actually answer this question without a computer at all by converting them to standard normal. So let's look at this. 
Let's look at their Z scores. So let's do each one of these. Let's say X, right? Let's say X is the rainfall, just like before. So X is normally distributed with an average rainfall of 40 inches, standard deviation of eight. Let's say Y is the wind speed in Chicago. Well, then Y is also normally distributed. The average wind speed was 10 miles an hour with standard deviation two miles an hour. And how we're going to compare these is just say, well, what is further from the mean? What is a higher standard deviation? What is more standard deviations away from the mean? And we're going to do that by using this formula. Okay. This converts it to our standard normal variable, this formula right here. So let's find Z. Z is going to be our X value. What is our X value here for the actual situation. So capital X is the random variable. Little x is what actually happened. Well, one year, the annual rainfall was 24 inches. So x is going to be 24. 24 minus the mean, which is 40, divided by the standard deviation, which is 8. You can use a calculator. It's going to be negative 16 over 8 or negative 2. Z equals negative two means we're two standard deviations below the mean. All right, negative just means you're below the mean, positive above the mean. Okay, so we'll look at the Z score over here. Do it for 13 miles an hour in Chicago. If big Y is the random variable, little y is what actually happened, 13 miles an hour. So again, you can just use X for both. Or you can rewrite the formula in terms of Y. X, Y, up to you. Either way, it's 13 minus the mean, which is 10, divided by the standard deviation, which is 2. Type that into a calculator, you're going to get 3 halves or 1.5. That means we're 1.5 standard deviations above the mean. So the question is, what's more unlikely? Are you more likely to be two standard deviations below or 1.5 above? Well, it's symmetric. The negative sign doesn't even matter for this problem, for what's more likely. Being two standard deviations away is more than being one and a half standard deviations away. Okay, so the Portland case is less likely. Portland case is more rare. The absolute value of negative two is bigger than the absolute value of 1.5. So the Portland situation is more rare. Another way of answering this is um, Portland's Z-score is further from the mean. All right. In relationship to the, to the standard deviation. So we're standardizing it, right? Because 24... 24 is much further from 40 than 13 is from 10. But we have to standardize it because distance means different things in each of these cases, right? So a standard deviation is four times as big in this case than in here, okay? So how far are we from 40? We're 16 away. That's two standard deviations. How far are we from 10? We're three units away. That's one and a half standard deviations. That's what normalizing does. Okay, just how many standard deviations are you from the mean? How many standard deviations are you from the mean? That's an important thing to keep in mind. Z scores are gonna come into play a lot in the next couple weeks, okay? So be familiar with them and what they represent. Um, 
they used to be used a lot more for probabilities than they are now um, because people didn't have so much access to things like GeoGebra. And so we had to make little tables and convert things to standard normal so we can use the tables. But if we wanted to graph the standard normal curve, it's very easy. The mean is zero. Add one standard deviation. Well, standard deviation is just one. Add another standard deviation, add another standard. Oh yeah, look at this. This is a nice curve. Okay, it's really easy. Just zero, one, two, three, one, two, three in the other direction. And you should get your standard normal looking like this. And GeoGebra defaults to standard normal, right? If, if you refresh, you refresh GeoGebra, it defaults to a mean of zero, standard deviation of one, our standard normal curve. Okay? And then you can see our standard deviations down here in our little graph. It's super nice, super easy. Standard normal is great. That's what z-scores are. The last video is just some more examples on this. It would be a good idea, a very good idea, to do the last page on yourself, on your own, and then watch the last video. All right. Good luck. Bye-bye. Have fun. Enjoy this gift of mathematics I give to you.